Hi, today we'll see how to solve linear equations using matrix method. Alongside, we'll see how to find cofactors, adjuncts, and inverse of a matrix. That said, let's get into class. Now, here we have a set of three equations and we have to find the x, the y, and the z. Now, the first thing is let's convert it to matrices because we're using matrix method. So, then converting this to matrix, it becomes we have the first three, two, Four, and I have one, 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 two, minus one, three. You should multiply x, y, z. And obviously, this should result into three, two, minus three. Converted to matrices. Now, when you look at this, you see this looks like a multiplying x be equals to b. So if I'm my unknown in this case is x, my x obviously becomes a or my x becomes b over a, which is the same thing as a inverse times b. But in this case, we're not talking about scalars, we're actually talking about matrices. So we'll be looking for a inverse, which is the inverse of this particular matrix A. Now, to find the inverse of this particular matrix, the first thing we'll be doing is to find the cofactor of this matrix. When we get the cofactor of this matrix, we'll transpose it. So we have C transpose over the determinant of the matrix. That is how we'll look for the inverse of this matrix. So let's get started. First, let's find the cofactor. Now to find the cofactor, if you, if you miss our lesson where we explained how to deal with cofactors, please do check the description below. There's a link to that lesson. We'll replace tags here. This is plus, minus, plus. Here will be minus, plus, minus. While here will be plus, minus, plus. These are tags that will be attached to the minus of this matrix to form the cofactors. Now let's call create this place for my work area and I prefer to have a little section for my work area now so that my first cofactor will be C11 which is the cofactor for this particular position for this particular element the cofactor will be picking the minus which are elements that are not on this rule and they are not on this column that is that will be 1 1 minus 1 and 3 so C11 will be is positive that will be 3 times 1, will be the determinant of that, 3 times 1, which is 3, minus, minus 1, which is equals to 3 plus 1, that's equals to 4. Do the same thing all around. Now, C12 will be the same thing as, will be negative into 3 minus 2, that will be equals to minus 1. C13 will be the same thing as we positive plus into we pick this rule like we did and pick this column and pick elements that are outside it. That will be the determinant of 1, 1, 2, and minus 1. That will be minus 1, minus 2, minus 2, which is equals to minus 3. Now C321 be the same thing as for C21, we'll be picking the second row this time and the first column. The second row and the first column. So that will be the determinant of 3, that's 3 and 2 minus 4 times minus 1. That will be minus into 3 times 2, that's 6 minus minus 4. That would be the same thing as minus 10. The next is C22. C22 is the same thing as we're picking the second rule and the second column. So we're picking elements out of that rule. But this time around, it's positive. So that would be 3 times 3, that's 9, minus 2 times 4, that's 8. That would be equals to positive 1. And then last, the next item is C23 which is equals to 
C23. That's the second rule and the third column. So I'll be picking 3 times minus 1. That's 3 into minus 1. Oh, let me write it here better. That will be negative. C23 is negative. I'll be picking 3 times minus 1. That's 3. That's minus 3 plus 4. That's equals to minus 1. The next item is C23. Now, C23 is negative. So I'll be picking 3 times minus 1. That's 3 here times negative 1. That's minus 3. Minus 2 times 2. That's minus 4. So that's equals to positive 7. Now, the next item is C31. For C31, I'll be picking it's positive. Then we'll be picking 2 times 1. That's 2 minus 4. That's equals to minus 2. Next item is C32. For C32, that's the third rule in the second column. So I'll be picking this negative. So 1 times 3, that's 3 minus 4. So that's equals to plus 1. And the last but not the least, the last item is C3. That's the third rule and the third column. That will be E and is positive. So we'll have 3 times 1, that's 3 minus 2, which is equals to positive 1. Now, so with that, we can now begin to draw out our matrix of cofactors. So my matrix of cofactor. C should look like this. The first element I have here is 4, minus 1, minus 3. I have minus 10, plus 1, 7, minus 2, plus 1, and plus 1. You don't necessarily need to attach the positive sign. I've only done that for clarity's sake. After drawing... After picking my elements, the next thing is to transpose our cofactor. I have simply copied matrix of cofactors. So now here is find the transpose of this matrix. We're changing for the transpose of this matrix. We'll simply convert the rows to columns and the columns to row. So this will be four minus ten minus two. Minus 1, here will be minus 3, here will be 1, and 7, and here will be minus 2, here will be 1, 1. Now, what I have done now is I found the transpose of this cofactor. Now, next thing I want to do is to find the determinant of the matrix. Very easy, we can simply pick the elements in the first rule of the matrix and the elements in the first rule of the cofactors. We'll multiply them together and sum it up. Here's what I'm going to do. Just watch me do it. My first element here is 3. My first element here is 3. So I'll pick that equals to 3 into 4. My first element for the cofactor is 4. Let's go back to this again. My first element, second element is 2. Then I'll pick the second element here in the cofactor. That's minus 1. And my third element here is 4. So I'll be picking 4 again, multiplying minus 3. So that at the end of the day, I have 12 minus 2 minus 12. Plus 12 minus 12, that's 0. So this is equal to minus 2. So the determinant of this matrix is minus 2. Now remember that we said that the inverse of a matrix A is equals to the cofactor of the matrix divided by its determinant. So that the inverse or so that the inverse of this matrix will simply be 4 minus 10 minus 2 minus 1. 1 and 1, minus 3, 
7 and 1 over minus 2. Because most I have so many elements here that this is 1, 1, this is 3, 7. It will not divide freely. It will give me fractions and decimals. So rather, I want to complete my job first. Remember that my x from our definition is equal to a inverse dot b, where my b is actually the, the where my b is actually the product of this of, of the linear equation. So that I'll be saying that my b here, this is my b, this is my b. So I can easily bring this to avoid event writing and writing. To be 3, 2, I think it is either 3 or minus 3. Let's confirm and be sure. Okay, minus 3. Minus 3. Minus 3. Now, this is going to be my result. This is actually my result matrix X, Y, and Z. So to get my X, let's solve for X first. X will come from the first rule. And multiply by this column so that that will be 4 into 3 minus 10 into 2 and minus 2 into minus 3 over minus 2 so that x now will come from 4 into 3 that's 12 minus 20 plus 6 over minus 2. That's equals to 12 plus 12 minus 20, that's minus 8. Minus 8 plus 6, that's minus 2. Minus 2 over minus 2. That's equals to 1. Now let's solve for y. In solving for y, let me make space available. Now to solve for y, y will be equals to I'm going to pick this rule here to solve for y. I'm picking this rule to multiply the column. So that will be minus 1 into 3 plus 1 into 2 and plus 1 into minus 3 over minus 2. That's equals to minus 3. Plus 2 minus 3 over minus 2. Minus 3 plus 2, that's minus 1. Minus 1 minus 3, that's minus 4. That's equal to minus 4 over minus 2. Obviously, that's equal to 2. And lastly, we'll be solving for z. And to solve for z, we'll say that we're picking the last rule and our vector. So that will be minus 3 now into 3 plus 7 into 2 plus 1 into minus 3 over minus 2. So that z now will be equal to minus 3 times 3, that's minus 9 plus 14 plus 14 minus 3 over minus 2 so that we have this to be minus 9 plus 14 that's 5 5 minus 3 obviously that's 2 over minus 2 so that z now equals to minus 1 so that we've been able to solve we've been able to address that our x is equals to 1 our y is equals to 2 and our z is equals to minus one. Thank you for staying with us so long. It's been a long time. Now, in case you're in an exam hall and you need to take a cross check to be sure you're actually correct, all you need to do is put these figures in their position and be sure to get the same answer. We got that our x is equals to one. We got x to be equals to one. We got y. We we got y to be equals to 2 and we got z to be equals to minus 1. Now, if I need to check this if it is right, all I need to do is in position of x, I'll put 1, 
position of y, I'll put 2, and position of z, I'll put minus 1. 3 times 1, that's 3, plus 2 times y, obviously, that's 4, and 4 times minus 1, that's minus 4. Plus 4 minus 4, that's 0. I'm left with 3. 3 is equals to 3. So I've been able to confirm that I am correct. An example, I can move to another question. Thank you, and see you in our next class.